often in our profession, we're called upon to create simple one hour, one credit workshops on how to catalog a book. We always laugh uproariously, of course, because we can't do that. Cataloging is incredibly complex. It involves uh, the implementation of many, many diverse uh, standards all together. And um, so we always laugh and say, well, let's create a one hour uh, presentation on brain surgery or rocket science and see where that gets us. So that's the um, <clears throat> reason I titled this four part video, Brain Surgery or Rocket Science. I'm going to catalog a book, one tiny little book. It's a book that's in module five. And um, so there's some narrative description of it there. I want to make the point that professional judgment derived from experience, in other words, much time working with the resources that you're cataloging is critical. A uh, really uh, exhaustive understanding of the publishing world and the academic world together and how they intersect. And then the application of many diverse standards um, all together, all at once. So um, let's have a look at how that goes. Here's our book. Our book is called How Libraries Must Comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. We have here uh, the title page, its verso, and a table of contents on the facing page. The title page is what AACR2 calls the chief source of information. It has a title proper, a statement of responsibility, and a publication statement with the date of publication. The verso um, has a box at the top about Oryx. That's interesting but irrelevant. Uh, at the bottom of the verso is the Library of Congress cataloging and publication data uh, with a border around it to make it look like a catalog card. How very quaint. Um, at the center, we see publishing data, um, or what in ACR2 is called um, a preferred source of information for the copyright statement, the publisher's address, a statement about simultaneous edition, a rights statement, and a made in the USA statement, and a statement about paper permanence. Uh, we won't need most of that. And on the facing page, the table of contents begins. Uh, we will mostly disregard that, except please notice that that's where the author of the foreword is named. So let's get started. The very first thing we're going to do is transcribe the title page. Now, wasn't that easy? Wait. Let's try that again. First, we transcribe the title proper. The title proper is how libraries must comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act curves, ADA closed curves. AACR2 tells us to transcribe it exactly as it appears, but we are to capitalize only the first word and any proper nouns, in this case, the name of the ADA, the Act. Then, the statement of responsibility is transcribed. Notice that it's uh, preceded by space slash space, that's ISBD punctuation, and that the entire statement is transcribed without capitalization. Then we see a publisher statement on the title page. We are told that the work is published by Oryx Press in 1992. We are, n that information is required we are not given a place of publication, but as I said a minute ago, ACR2 says we can use the verso of the title page for that. So there we see Phoenix, Arizona written out. According to the appendix of ACR2 on abbreviation, we are to abbreviate Arizona as A-R-I-Z period. Postal abbreviations may be transcribed if they appear, but they must not otherwise be used. And then finally, the eighth area of an ACR2 description is called the standard numbering, or the ISBN. So we will transcribe the ISBN. Now, just in case you're wondering, there are all of the rules from ACR2 that go into transcribing this little bit. And there's where we are so far. Let's go on. We finished transcription. The next thing we are going to do is describe the book. 
in terms of its physical characteristics. Gosh, that looks simple, doesn't it? Let's try that again. First, we are to give a statement of the extent of the item. There are two sets of pages in the book separately numbered. One of them is 22 pages numbered with Roman numerals, and the other is 168 pages numbered with Arabic numerals. We are to give each in turn, and with the abbreviation P, period. Then we are to give a statement regarding any other physical details. There are none relevant in this book. There are no illustrations, for instance. So we are now told to give the height of the item. That's called its dimensions. For books, we always give the height of the spine in centimeters, rounded to the next centimeter up. Our book is 22.5 centimeters tall, so we will give 23 centimeters. There are the rules we've used to produce the physical description that looks like that. Next, we are going to <clears throat> annotate our description. The annotation is to uh, bring out details that are not obvious from the transcription of the title page and also to uh, assist in selection of the work. So here we go. We are giving first a second statement of responsibility. Uh, we learned this from the title of table of contents and we transcribed it from there in exactly as it appears forward by and we give the name. Then we also <coughs> are aware that the book has both bibliographical references, uh, citations at the end of each chapter, and an index. And the Library of Congress requires us to give a note uh, concerning both and the format of Library of Congress cataloging for ACR2 says to merge those two things into a single note. Here are the rules and the Library of Congress rule interpretations that we have just employed to create this annotation. So to review, we annotate with two notes. And finally, we employ AACR2 syntax to create this <clears throat> full description. Notice that each area of description is preceded by a full stop space dash space. That also is ISBD punctuation and that each and that the whole description ends with a full stop or a period. <clears throat> now, that was AACR2. Let's do it over again. This time, let's use RDA. Remember, in RDA, we have an entity relationship design which employs the WEMI model, work, expression, manifestation, and item. Our work is an anthology of essays about library compliance with ADA, compiled by Foos and Pack. The expression of this work is this particular collection of essays. The manifestation is the book we are cataloging, How Libraries Must Comply, published by Oryx Press in 1992. Our item is one physical volume. RDA requires, instead of the eight areas that we used with AACR2, that we use this list of core entities and attributes, of course, using only those that are applicable as we move along. So let's go. First, we record the attributes of the manifestation. You will see that that looks just exactly like what we did before when we transcribed the title page, the chief source of information. Now, instead of the principle in ACR2 to describe the item in hand, we have the principle from RDA, take what you see, record it as it appears. Um, RDA makes some differences. There are to be no abbreviations at all, of course, unless the word is abbreviated in the resource. Copyright dates are given in addition to dates of publication and always by Li Library of Congress uh, cataloging policy, and they're given with the copyright symbol. Notice that um, the copy, the ISBN is now considered a manifestation attribute, and so it's recorded here with details of the manifestation. And now I've listed for you as well the RDA instructions that go into this attribute uh, recording. Next, we record the attributes of the carrier. Notice that that's 
Pretty similar to what we did in AACR2, but not exactly. RDA requires us to identify the kind of carrier using a term from its selected list, volume, and the number of them. We have one volume. Notice no abbreviations, so we spell out the word pages. I notice that CM is not an abbreviation. It is a symbol for centimeters, and so it is given without a full stop. Next, we record the attributes of the expression and the work. Um, an attribute of the expression is that a forward by Gerald Jahoda is present, and an attribute of the work is that it has bibliographical references, and an attribute of the expression is that it has an index. So we are told in RDA to make notes about attributed agents and to record supplementary content and LC policy tells us to consider bibliographies and indexes to be important enough always to be uh, routinely recorded. Okay, so that's our RDA description and it looks pretty much like what we had in AACR2 with just some minor changes. So now let's look at mark formatting. In AACR2 we begin with field 245 which contains the title proper and statement of responsibility. Notice that the first indicator is blank. That's because we are not considering what it means now. We'll come back to that in the next video. The second indicator is zero, indicating that there are no non-filing characters. In other words, we want this title to file under HOW. Notice that a dollar sign precedes the subfield indicator C. That dollar sign is used in as a typographic representation of the delimiter sign that you will find in OCLC uh, because that sign is not available in uh, most uh, word processing uh, applications. So this is just a typographical convention. Notice there is no subfield A. That is because an OCLC convention is that when subfield A is first, we simply do not give that subfield coding at the beginning of the field. It's assumed. There is no subfield B because we have no other title information. Field 260 contains the statement of publication, distribution, etc. Notice its indicators are blank. Here we have a subfield B and a subfield C. Field 300 contains the statement of the physical description. And field 500 general note contains our note about the statement of responsibility. And 504 is the field that means bibliography note that contains our note about the bibliography and index. Now the ISBN is also recorded as part of the transcription, but notice it's recorded not in a variable field but in a control field 0 to 0 with blank indicators and with no hyphens. OCLC knows how to print that in a display for the public with the hyphens in the right place, but by recording it without the hyphens we make it more searchable. Here is our mark AACR2 record. And that's how it looks without the bullet points. Now let's do it in RDA. It's pretty similar. 245 is the same. 264, however, is the field used in RDA for the statement about manufacturer and production. And so we are going to um, give one with the second indicator one, indicating this contains a place and publisher name. And then we give a second one with that copyright date with second indicator four, which tells the system all it's going to find here is a copyright date. Notice three new fields, 336, 337, and 338. These are defined for RDA. Each contains a term from a specific instruction in RDA. One identifies the content as text, one identifies uh, the source of mediation. Unmediated means we don't need a machine to play this book. And uh, volume tells us what kind of carrier we're dealing with. Uh, the rest is the same. So, there you have it. Cataloging a simple book. We've only begun to catalog it. 
We've created a resource description. We have not created access to the work. We've not done any authority control. We've not even thought about the subject of the work or how to classify the work. We'll come back to those in future videos. Thank you.